Let's see the lead code problem of rotating the list. We are given an example linked list here and we have to rotate it k times. So let's take k equals 2 for our example. This means we have to take the last element of the list and move it to the front. And we have to do this two times. That's it. Also, remember that if the value of k is greater than the size of the list, we don't need to rotate it k times. Instead, we can take k modulo the size of the list and rotate it that many times, which will be equivalent. For example, if the value of k is, let's say, 7, we can take 7 modulo 5, which is the size of this list, giving us 2. Now, in practice, we don't shift elements one by one. Instead, we take the last k elements and move them directly to the front. So let's see how the efficient algorithm works. So we have the linked list here and the value of k is 8. Initially, we don't know the size of the list. So our first task is to determine its size. To achieve this, we'll write a simple piece of code. First, we create a variable called length, which we initialize to 1. Then we define another variable tail and set it to the head of the list. Now we use a while loop to traverse the list. This loop will run as long as the next element of the tail is not none. Inside the loop, we update tail to its next element and increment the length variable by one. And this process will continue until we have reached the end of the list. So now, when the next of the tail becomes none, the loop ends. At this point, we have determined the length of the list, which is 5. Next, we calculate the value of k by taking its modulo with the length of the list. So here, it will be 3. And after that, we check whether k is equals to 0. If k is 0, it means no rotation is needed and we simply return the head of the list. However, since k is not 0 in our case, we proceed to the next step. Now that we know we need to shift the last three elements to the front, the next step is to locate the element just before the part we want to move. In this case, the fourth element from the end. And to do this, we first create a variable called current, initially set to the head of the list. And then we run a loop that iterates length minus k minus one times. Now pause and think about it. This loop helps us to stop exactly one step before the part of the list we want to rotate. For our example, this will run only one times and after this loop, the current pointer will be set to the element just before the rotation point. Next, we create a variable called new head and we'll set it to current.next. This will be the new head of the list after rotation. And then we set the current.next to none. And this step is crucial as it disconnects the two parts of the list. And finally, we set the next pointer of the tail to point to the original head of the list and with that the rotation is complete. In the code, we first check if the list has only one element or if it's empty or if k is zero. In any of these cases, we simply return the head of the list without any changes. Otherwise, we proceed to find the length of the list and calculate the value of k. Then we locate the node just before the rotation point followed by performing the rotation itself. At the end, we return the new head of the list. This algorithm has only one loop, so its time complexity is linear. And since we don't use any extra memory, the space complexity is constant.